Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jay. A few days ago, I was walking through my local art shop and I came across a canvas, but it's not just any canvas. When you flip it over, you find six tubes of gouache paint, a paintbrush, and a sponge. But three of the paint tubes were actually sided up so I could see the names of them. One of them was named Colbat Violet. If you don't know, Colbat was something that was used as a pigment a while in the back for a nice blue slash violet paint color. Now, this has been stopped slash very, very rare slash very expensive for a bunch of different reasons. Number one, if you inhale too much of it, you can get something called coal bat poisoning. Yeah. <laughs> Number two, it's pretty hard to find, it's rare, and it's a really nice hue and saturation, which makes for a popular color. Now, when finding this, I was surprised because I've never seen a paint color named after that's not actually named after something that is discontinued rare or something that isn't that it isn't so i thought what if this is actually coal bat violet or something really similar to it i got very curious and i decided to pick it up with me so this is what happened stay tuned when i was looking through the brush i found something really cool this looks like it was hand done if you look at where it's crippled and where the dent is, it looks a little bit slanted, mean, meaning it probably wasn't a machine that made it. It looks like that it was hand done and that it was pressed by itself. I'm gonna see the colors. Oh my gosh. I'm only seeing two of the colors, or three of the colors. sponge we're gonna look at the colors that comes with six so there's burnt sienna which i already knew was there because it was upward it's a little bit cold um but there's burnt sienna and i guess it's squash which is really nice i didn't know what it was beforehand so that's good to know cerulean blue very interesting i want to do some research on this one on everyone but especially this one and the next few Ivory black. I wonder how black this is gonna be. I'll show them all at the end as well. English light green. Looks like a very pretty color. I love me a good green, honestly. And burnt sienna, just a classic. And now the most curious one, the one I have the most suspicion over and interest over, the Colbat Violet. Now, as you know, Colbat is a very sought after, expensive, toxic, not very popular, um, no, well, very popular, but not very often you see um, item that you can have in paint. It's also sometimes in TPUs. I'm not gonna say the word, I don't wanna get demonetized. Um, and I'm very curious about how this is gonna look. Okay, after doing some research on the Cerulean Blue Emet, I realized that this is a very um, amazing paint color because of its hue and saturation. It is not that uncommon, um, but it looks like a super pretty color and I'm really excited to try it. A lot more put together. What the heck? Okay, so I did some swatch. This is the first one, and I think um, I had a tip right afterward, and it is to like massage the tube. So I kind of went like that, and then went like this before I opened all the tubes, and I I kind of um, found it helpful to kind of make the color mix because there's an oil on top of the gouache. It's very interesting. I've never tried gouache before. This is the, I'm pretty sure the burnt sienna. And then this is the green. I'm absolutely in love with green. So this is the green. Don't look at this other side. I found that there was like brown on one of the sides of my brush, but that is like, Oops. hopefully you can see that. That is a beautiful green color. This black, it is dried for like five minutes and it absorbs you can see that my lighting is kind of bad right now but it absorbs so much light 
like it is very dark it is like sharpie and when i do this like rough material here you can't really see it like in action i kind of think that's like a good technique for clothing and roughness which is really cool now we're gonna try out the ones i'm most excited for starting off with the sir Ewing blue emmet i'm so excited for this i'm actually kind of scared for this one but that is gonna come afterward okay Oh, let's test it. Let's test it. Let's test it. Oh, I need to puncture the hole really quick. Let's go ahead and spread it. That's not showing that like light justice. Like, it's not showing it well enough. Okay, so I changed the angle so hopefully you can see it better. It's a little bit, I feel like darker and less glossy on screen, but let's just let's just go ahead and test this out. I'm very excited. It is. I'm mean, absolutely in love with like the texture of these paints. I guess the texture of gouache. It's like the mix between acrylic and watercolor in one. I think it's a very cool medium to work with. Let me try the rough texture. Okay, I'm so scared. Um, I'm very excited. I'm like shaking. I don't know if I should wear a mask or not. I'm not, but yeah, I'm scared. Oh. oh my god, I got it open. Can you see how glossy that is? Okay, okay. I'm like. Okay. Oh my gosh. It's the prettiest purple I've ever seen. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't know. Should I smell it? Spicy. <laughs> that can't be good. Let me show you. This purple, this is this is absolutely great. I'm like shook. <laughs> What I think I'm gonna do is a portrait. So I'm gonna do these colors, this color for the skin, and add some black to that to make darker shades. So it is a little bit loose if you can hear. So what I'm gonna do is a nice tip is to go onto the back of your canvas um, and because this is a stretch canvas, it's a little bouncy. I'm gonna put some water, just like splurt some water everywhere to tighten it up. Now we're just gonna dry it. Okay, so it is the next day. I was really tired. It was pretty late at night. So I slept. I am refreshed now. I'm ready to work on this. Last night, I made a light wash of burnt sienna using a sponge. I just put some all over the canvas and took a bunch of water on the sponge and spread it out. I saw this hack on TikTok and I really like how it turned out and how it's not just even. It's kind of a little bit more of a watercolor feeling. Also, because of the water I added, the canvas is now a lot tighter and it's not that stretchy. If I was to press down on it, it doesn't go as down as it went beforehand. So that's great that we have a better surface right now. In my opinion, it's like an oil acrylic and watercolor mixed in one. Remind me of oil being from the oil on top of the paint, the thickness from acrylic and the color from watercolor. It's a very interesting mixture. It's like if you were to mix acrylic and oil and expect watercolor, but like it has a bunch of different traits to it. It's really weird, but I like it. Also, based off of what happened yesterday, I know that these dry really quickly, so I'm gonna have to kind of work fast for blending. This is the image that I'm referencing off of, um, but I'm gonna do a few adjustments. This is gonna be a reference, so I'm gonna use this idea, but skin tone's gonna be a little bit different, and basically I just work around what I have. For the outfit, I'm thinking that the green would be great, 
For the sea, I want to try to mix a green and a purple and make it a little bit more of an exotic sea. We have some brown for the hair and the boat, and then some lighter brown for the other parts of the hair, and some black for details. Okay, let's get started. Okay, starting off with the sketching progress. So I first started off with the basic head shape and it was kind of easy for me to make the head. I moved on to the ocean and for this, it got harder when I was painting, but it was fun to draw. Ocean form is kind of difficult, so I spent some time on it. But after that, I really liked how it looked. Okay, so I have finished the drawing. I spent so long improving the lips and the eyes. Um, and everything in general. I really like how it turned out and the boat and everything else. So now I'm going to get to painting. I'm going to use a plastic plate for my canvas. A paper, a paper plate. <laughs> Okay, starting off with, I'm pretty sure it was light umber, it might have been called burnt sienna, and I started off with the skin base. I like to do the skin first so that I can build upon it, and then when I'm moving on to the hair and the clothing, it just kind of comes together more. Uh, I was layering on top, and then I went in with a darker brown for the nose and mouth and eyes, and this is where a huge mistake happened. I'll let you watch. Right now, I'm having a lot of trouble layering this part. I don't know what happened, but it's turning like white and it's whitening. It is uh, very irritating, but I'm trying to fix it. I don't know. I think I've like kind of experienced this before when using paint. I think it was just like acrylic, and it's not a fun experience. Uh, it's not spreading. Well, after this happened, I tried to layer it on and smoothen it out. And it semi worked, so now we're back on track. I redid the nose and I tried to be more careful with it and try not to blend it out. I did the eye, which I'm really happy with. And for the lips, I didn't have any red, so I went ahead with a blue. <laughs> Okay, so right now I'm going to go in with the English light green, which is one of my favorite greens I've ever worked with. And I'm going to be using it for the C, but I'm also going to be using it for the shirt portion. So I'm going to mix it with some black to make it darker, and then save the original color for the C. For the hoodie or jacket, I'm not exactly sure what it is. I used the green, but just added a lot of black to it. And at first, I thought I added way too much. It it's really dark, but I like it because in the sun, you can see the green and it kind of shines through and it makes a nice deep green. Um, for the top two things that are coming out of it, I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but I love those. I had kind of two different green colors because I ran out, so I had to adjust that. Okay, moving over to the C. So for this, I had some trouble. Um, on the out widths of the ocean or sea there was some white stuff but in these six squash paints there was no white or gray or anything remotely close so i had to use a brown and lighten it up but after that i really liked the result and after a few days here's the final result
I had so much fun testing out these exotic paint colors and figuring out where they came from. My theory is that they were recreations, but just really close. I'm hoping that's what it was because I didn't wear a mask for this process, but I really enjoyed doing this and I really enjoyed testing out these paints. I'm in love with them and I now have a favorite green, so I totally want to do more art with them. So let me know if you want a part two. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to be trying to post a lot more, so stay tuned for that. And thank you for watching.